Right. So now we are going to talk about evangelism. Let's go to Matthew chapter 29, which is uh, Matthew chapter 29 is the blueprint of evangelism, is what we call the, 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 the Great Commission. I'm pretty sure you all have heard of the Great Commission. But in this teaching, discipleship on, on, on evangelism, what I want to do is I want to make... My Matthew does not have a 29. Matthew 28, sorry. Apologies. Matthew 28. Verse 19, the, the last chapter of Matthew, sorry. <laughs> Matthew chapter 28, verse 19 to 20. We can read from verse 18. So uh, one of you will read this one and then the other one will read Mark. And we are talking about practical evangelism. Eh? Matthew, so, what? Matthew 28, from verse 19 to 20. Verse 19 mm, to 20. Okay. okay, I can read. Okay. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. 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 So Matthew 28, verse 19 to 20 is what we call the Great Commission. When people die, they leave their last will and testament. Jesus died, rose again before he left. He left, he left as his last will and testament. Go, go, go. When, when you don't have any prophetic word and people ask, what is God saying today? You must answer them the same thing he said 2,000 years ago. Go. That's what he's saying. What is God saying? Go. 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 So you must go. That is what God is saying. Because that does not change. God is still saying we must go. We must go where? Go into all the world and do what? And preach the gospel and make disciples of all nations. You understand? So we must go and make disciples. Now, the... The difficulty perhaps is in how down, how now to win souls né, for Christ. And before we go there, uh, let's read now Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 18. Mark chapter 16, verse 15 to 18. Mark 16, okay. 15 to 18. Mark 16, 15 to 18 says, he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Whoever mm. believes and is baptized will be saved, but mm -hmm. whoever does not believe will be condemned. Mm -hmm. And this signs will accompany those who believe. In mm -hmm. my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up. They will pick up snakes with their hands, and when they drink deadly poison, it will not hurt them at all. They mm -hmm. will place their hands on sick people, and they will get well. Amen. So that is Amen. the another goal. Né? The first goal is in Matthew 28, 19, 20. The second goal is in Mark 16, from 15 all the way to 18. Go, preach the gospel. So this sign shall follow them that believe. They will lay hands on the sick. They will drink poison. It will not harm them. They will pick up snakes. It will not bite them. And all these things, they happen in the Bible. Paul was bitten by a snake. They were waiting for him to swell up. They didn't happen. Many, many, many people were poisoned, but they didn't die. You know, many people lay hands on the sick people and they recovered. So that is God putting his stamp of approval on the work that you have done. In other words, God manifests his word with signs, miracles, and wonders to confirm that what you are saying is true. Why? Because the world that cannot see spiritually, but they can see physically. So when a cripple starts walking, they'll believe in God. When a dead person rises from the dead, they will believe in God. You understand? So that mm -hmm. is the power that accompanies the work of God. But now the question is, how do you now become an effective uh, disciple-making machine? If, if for lack of a better word, I can use that. How do you become an effective uh, 
soul winner for Christ. Because remember, second, I think it's First Timothy 2 from verse 19. Paul says, what is our crown? What is our hope of rejoicing? It's you. In, in, uh, you are the, our crown. You are the jewel in the crown of the Lord Jesus. So when we will go to heaven, you will have to present the souls that you want for Christ. And that's your reward. And that's why Paul was saying uh, to, to, to the, to, in, in second, first Timothy 2, I think from 19, that the, 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 no, first Thessalonians, sorry, 2, verse 19, that the, their joy is the souls that we have won. It's like when you have worked hard, you have to show your work. And in Christianity, you have to win souls for Christ. You have to worship God, obviously, but you have to win souls for Christ. And how do you win souls? A practical, uh, let me give you a practical approach to winning souls. Eh? So number one, what you must do, you must pray. Eh? Pray, 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 pray. You must have fellowship with God. So if you're a prayerful person, already you are removing the barriers from the people listening because some demons, they sit on top of the people's ears and eyes and heart and what they 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 chain them. So prayer, be a prayerful person. Secondly, how, how I can advise you to win souls. Take a list of 10 people that you believe need to hear about Christ. Write them down on a piece of paper and start just praying for them. Just pray, 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 pray. And then as you pray for them, the Lord starts softening their hearts. Then the third step, now you go out and minister to them the word. Can I share with you the word of God? You know, build friendship with them. Maybe for the whole one month or two months, you're not even preaching to them the gospel. Hi, hi, hi. People in your work, hi, hi. They are your friends. So now after they become your friends, now they'll ask, ah, every day you are always smiling. Or one day you are in the lunch time together. Now you can share with them your testimony, how you became saved. So the easiest way to preach the gospel is to give your own testimony. How did Christ save you? You know, nobody can argue with your testimony. Is your testimony is what God did for you. And then always close it up with God can also do it for you and give them an opportunity to repent. Do you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior? I'm here to pray with you. And maybe some will say, no, I don't want Maybe some will say, yes, I've been waiting for this all the time. Yeah, and when they do, now you come to the point of following up. You know, you recommend the church for them. You recommend them to keep praying. You recommend if you are strong already, you start discipling them with these things that you were, you were taught. It's always advisable to tell people who became newly born again to read the book of John because the book of John talks about love. So they must read John so that they can learn more about God's love. And it's as simple as that. Now, what deters us from preaching the gospel is fear. Fear of what? Rejection. Just remember this one thing. When the people reject the gospel, eh? hello? Yes. When the people reject the gospel, they are not rejecting you. You understand? Mm. They are not rejecting you. They are rejecting the one who sent you. Who is who? They are rejecting Jesus. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. I'll read for you. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Lucas. Then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority of all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. And he said unto them, take nothing for your journey, neither staves, nor script, neither bread, neither money, neither have two coats apiece. And whatsoever house you enter into, they abide and thence depart. And whosoever will not receive you. Hello? Yes, we are here, Pastor. I'm here. Oh, yes, I'm, I'm, yes. Putting an, I'm putting an emphasis. I'm saying, hello, are you there? <laughs> so Eva will not receive you. That's my point. 
when you go out of that city, shake off the very dust from your feet for a testimony against them. And they departed and went through towns, preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. And so forth and so forth and so forth. So verse 5 is the point. Whoever does not receive you, shake the dust off your feet. Because that will be a testimony to them that they did not reject you. They rejected Jesus Christ himself because you are a messenger of Jesus Christ. On the day of judgment, they will have no excuse because they rejected Jesus Christ. So don't take it personally when the people are talking bad about you, beating you, making you to suffer for the gospel because they are simply rejecting the one who sent you, which is Jesus. Amen. Amen. So what I'm saying is don't take it personal. They are just rejecting Jesus. They are not rejecting you. Amen. And you are simply a messenger of the gospel. So the messenger of Jesus Christ is well taken care of. He also suffers tribulation. And I have seen where you go to a house and they welcome you with very open arms. And they say, don't go anywhere else. Don't sleep anywhere else. You sleep in our house since you came in this town to preach the gospel. And I've also been to places where they say, ah, yeah, 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 we don't want you here. You are destroying us. Get out of here. It's both. So you rejoice because you are a disciple of Christ and you are fulfilling the commandment. And in conclusion, if you are afraid to speak, what you can do, just take a gospel tract. Nah? Mm -hmm. Take a gospel tract and like if you are, if you are preaching to, to strangers in the park, just give them the gospel tract. Say, yeah, can I give you this gospel tract? Say, yeah, thank you. And if you feel led, you can say, can I share it with you? You see, that's a, a conversation starter. And you, you share with them. That's very easy to, for you to win souls to Christ, especially when you're dealing with strangers. Yes. Thank you. Amen. Yeah. So that is.